hand gesturing that no one can see. Right. All of it is uh, is completely irrelevant stuff. That's no one needs right. to hear about it. Tell right? it. It could have been a lot worse. <laughs> I could be like Kenny Pigman. I didn't take a ball off the back when I was trying to tee up at the PGA Championship. <laughs> From so the shamble of all people. Just tell me what I would you post. Like you did something bad today. Nine. <laughs> That yeah, was ninety. <laughs> so that's awful. not bad, is it? Oh, that's you go seventy nine to a ninety. You're Tom Watson in your in his prime at Weston, <laughs> and then you go to your course and your your retired Constantino Roca just slashing it around <laughs> out there. Can't do it. I don't know what it is, man. I I I'm just not that good. I just happen to fire oh, up. Oh, that's a bad. That's a bad night. spot. That's a bad no, spot where a guy goes. Spot it's mentally. A it's a bad spot when you go. I'm just not that good. Yep. Last year we were talking. I'll be shooting under par. Now it's we're not that good. You got one way out, and it's go lefty. Well, that's never going to happen. I just shot 79 and lapped the field the other day. Obviously, lefty isn't going to happen. Do you know if you break 80, you're like in the top one or two percent of golfers that have ever played the game? That's a fact. It's very difficult to do, and I'm proud of what happened earlier in the week. Today, I, I don't care so much, but again, I didn't take a ball off the back. I was trying to address my tee shot on 18, so from show that it. standpoint, I'm winning. Show it. Pay, what's yeah, the guy's name? Pigman or Pigman? Well, that's the best. This guy's handle is Kenny Pigman, which... I love names like this. That's a Kramer. That's literally like Kramer. That's a Seinfeld That's license right. plate. The ass man. Remember, it was the ass man and right. Banya and all of that. Like this, Kenny Pigman is a Seinfeld. Character. There was a pig man. Remember at That's the hospital right. when George was Kramer. in to get his tonsils taken out. I think Kramer was carrying a guy that he thought was a pig man. Was right. helping him escape. Well, that guy's a PGA professional and he's at Oak Hill. And what I love about a handle like Pigman is. I want to know, do his friends call him Pig, the Pig, or the Pig I Man? I think just Piggy. Piggy. Just Piggy? Piggy, Piggy for sure. So you know his buddies are buzzing back home. Like, you guys see Piggy? He just got smoked <laughs> on 18. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, there was a four call, and he leaned into it. Because when yeah. the ball's in the air and people are yelling, look out, look out, you have no idea which way you're supposed to brace. And yeah. he, he braced into it. What the and hell the is that, took though? one off is the that, back. Is that a go for a green scenario, or is that an errant tee ball from another hole? Yeah, he's on a different hole, I think. And Obviously, but, like, what was DeChambeau doing? Was I don't he, know. like, it's I don't just know. crazy. It had I think to he be had an DeChambeau. iron in his hand. I, I think it was, like, a snap hook. And you know how the tour sets up. Like, sometimes if they're playing so far back, it can be close to the other green. Maybe yeah. he was hitting – you know, behind a tree or so. I don't, I haven't seen DeChambeau. Obviously that video is out there too, because there would be cameras on him. Yes. While he's, he's like hitting. two under too. He's in contention. He's absolutely in contention. He's already in the clubhouse and he's four on, actually he's still out there. He's four under. He's in the lead. Wow. He's, he's got a solo lead four under through 16 and he almost killed the pig man, which is <laughs> wild. Kenny Pigman, <laughs> which I got to find out where the, where piggy's at. Cause yeah, He's got to be way down. I'm pulling oh, for he's him now. 11 over. He's dead last. Because he's a local pro, right? Like, he played himself in. I don't know where he's from. He's probably from Charleston or something like that. He played his way into the PGA Championship. He's a PGA pro. That's a tough cocktail but... conversation in the club, in the locker room. It's like, I shot 82, mm -hmm. and somebody beaned me on the deck on 18. <laughs> it's just like, man. it's a total... <laughs> Wednesday night men's league thing to happen where you're right. just slashing it and somebody beans you with a ball. You're like, is there? All right, that's could, it. Could he go on the like? Say this would be the equivalent of a guy getting called up and then going on the IR. Like, what if he like dropped there and couldn't finish? Like, like oh my arm, like the Rodney Dangerfield in <laughs> Caddyshack. My arm, it's broken. Like, what if he did that? Could he go on like the PGA Tour? IL or something, or injury reserve, and maybe collect some money out of it. I like, don't believe there's an IL, but maybe if he's smart enough or if he's right, conniving like, enough, you're right. Can he can he 
go down for the count and beg them to allow them to play in next year's tournament. Right, like like right. I I was injured here, like and maybe there's some sort of financial <laughs> compensation. Like, don't you think the there's pig. something that he could like Just play a, an a angle? Just a sneaky little pig, that Kenny Pigman. If he, he could get in there, that would yeah, be great. <laughs> you always hear stories of like, you know, especially down south of the border, you know, bump somebody, they show up in a neck brace the next yeah. day or whatever. I was going like, to say, Jamie, I would love to see his search history right now. Can I sue DeChambeau? <laughs> How exactly. much is he worth? Full yeah. body cast on the on the range tomorrow morning. <laughs> exactly. There's Kenny Pigman. He's out there. He's got a full body cast, and uh, yeah. he's flown in. You know, William Matar. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. on the bag for him on Friday. Bill Matar is going to be his new caddy. Who's Kramer? Uh, I'm curious. Who's Kramer's to know lawyer? Is Jackie. Jackie Childs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jackie Childs is in there with the. What Pigman. I'm curious to know, Patrick Cantley, the slowest golfer on the PGA Tour right now. Yeah, just teed off as our show started, and we're gonna go off the air at seven o'clock. Where do you think he will be on that golf course when we go off of the twelfth? The twelfth. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think they can play for almost four hours, so I, I, I'll guess thirteen. You don't think 13, he finishes 14. his round? No, they're not gonna play that quick. Like, no one plays that quickly on the PGA Tour. Everyone plays in, like, four and a half, 445. It's that. a massive field, right? There's You're just not going to be able to move fast enough, even if you want to. But it is mid-May. Like, the sun's up. It's playable until I think about 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. So he should get through 13, around 13, and then he'll I have to I say he's on 11 fairway. 11 fairway. Possibly. When we're done the wow. Show. Possibly. Yeah, he's he's got the new caddy, though, right? He's got LaCava on his bag. He's got Tiger's boy. Well, what do you think LaCava's going to say? Hey, do you want to hurry it up here, pal? Like that, the, the player's the money maker. I, I understand. I don't know that, if the caddy's going to say, I got a dinner I got a dinner reservation. Well, let me ask you this. Who do you think had a worse day today? The pig man, Kenny Pigman, who shot 11 over. He's not even in the clubhouse. It might be worse than that. And took a ball off the back, or John Rahm, the number one player in the world, who posted a six over par, which I I just saw online, is the worst first round for a number one player in the world uh, since I believe Greg Norman back wow. in 1990. Actually, no, he set a new marker. John Rahm just posted the worst opening round score to par by a world number one at the PGA Championship. That distinction was previously shared by Greg Norman in 90 and Tiger Woods in 05, which is wild. They, they were five over their first round. So Rahm is not in a good place. Dude, that, uh, you know, that golf course, one miss, you're in that hay or you're in those bunkers and you can have a miserable day cooking. Mm -hmm. Like it's up and down city if you're not on – like if you're not on target. They, you saw those guys. It was oh, like yeah. two inches off the fairway. It goes into three-inch rough and it's like hack and hope. This is U.S. Open yeah. basically standards. I mean, And you can tell – you, know, you know the way those guys score, Hayes. That's a big boy course right now and yep. it's like – who knows? Like, is 12 under going to win that golf tournament? For those guys, that's a golf course. I'm not sure it'll be double digits. You're right. If that's in question, you know that this thing is a monster. It's playing 7,400 yards. It's a par 70. Like, that's wild. 7,400 yards with that rough par 70. Yet there's Scotty Scheffler. Again, three under, first round. I told you. My yep. guy, Scotty Scheffler. Guy. Keegan Guys Bradley the up there. Keegan Bradley's three under. He's on 18 right now. Rick Hovland. He's had another great start at the majors, so we'll track it. A lot of Canadian content, too. Corey Connors, three under. Corey Connors, our boy, who yeah. neither of us picked, for the record. Where's Mackenzie Hughes in all of this? He's four over. He's in the clubhouse, so not not the best, but he's still, with the way the scores are playing out, he's that's not bad. Like, if he can go two or three, if he can go two under tomorrow, he'll make the cut for sure. The cut line will be three or four over tomorrow. Yeah, he make, he possibly can shoot par tomorrow, and he'll be all good. Uh, so anyway, we got Steve Sands coming up in a couple of hours. Sands will join us. Sands was nice enough to be sending us some notes during the Leaf Lightning series. Yeah. Right. Like after the the Leafs beat Tampa, he sent a note up. Hey, enjoy it. That's going to be fun for you guys to talk about the second round. I don't remember hearing from Sansy after they lost in five. Went pretty quiet there. I mean, I didn't even yeah. hear from him after Dubis's presser or anything which Nothing. i mean is it i'm getting this maybe this is a jerry's percentage 656 tomorrow night 
Are we getting some sort of? I don't see new, how Shanahan dump? can get away with that, though. Like, oh, no, no, he, he's going to speak, but, but you I'm, can't speak at nine at night. Like, I don't think so, Noodles. I, I think it's possible some news happens tonight or any minute now, and then there's an announcement that follows that. Shanahan will speak tomorrow at ten a.m. You know, right. on the news tonight. But as I've been saying all week, I, I've been waking up in the morning anticipating an email, this has happened or that has happened, and Shanahan will speak in two or three hours. I right. don't. You can't do a news dump. I, they can. I mean, they can do whatever they want. But it just seems like that. Like, I don't. I, I can't reason with that. Well, I, I understand. Like, the Raptors did that, I believe. Yeah. Didn't they? Nick Nurse, wasn't it like a, a late Friday night? It was. It, it was wasn't, Friday. It was a there, late Friday else. news dump. And wasn't the Le- like the, I feel like the Leafs were playing. It was something like literally like, hey, or, oh, by the way, Nick Nurse is out. You know, like, and, yeah. and what I'm saying is you might get like the press release as Kyle Dubas chooses, is, is, chooses to move on. Brandon Shanahan will speak on this day or whatever. At least something can't like really that. even do a news dump, can they? Like with the way their news breaks. Talking the timing up. of it. Like, right. you know, you're right. It's, no, it I know, but matter, it's like but... the idea of the Leafs having anything be a news dump. I don't even know if it's possible. Like fr- if it happens Friday, all of a sudden Masters is down. at the, Like who, it, it just seems with Leaf stuff, it can never be a news dump because everything blows yeah, up. You're right. It's just good. But uh, – we got a long weekend coming up, and I know a lot of teams yeah, right. have their a lot of teams have their scouting meetings starting next week because the draft is right around the corner. So, like, there's business to be done here, and and believe me, the next six weeks to however long the summer and that this is a critical off season for the Toronto Maple Leafs organization. So you don't want to be hasty. You want to get it right. You want to make sure the people in place or in the right frame of mind if Kyle, you know, ends up working out a deal, all of that type of stuff. But it's I get you take your time. They're not they don't owe us anything to hit a clock. But you know, the longer it goes, it just kind of feels like, okay, maybe it's not what we thought was coming. That's the way I, I think it. Maybe I'm wrong with this. Well that could be the case if they're not actually gonna change anything is they feel like they can almost news dump that in a way where people are, are moving on. Not right. the media, not the reporters that are down there every day. They will still be down there. Right. We will be on the air talking about it. But the nature of society is, you know, it's 24-hour news cycles. And right. if you wait four days, five days, seven days, and then everyone's tailed off and they're focusing on other things – it just may not be something that, that is as loud, the tracking of it. Like, we're still tracking it now. And, again, we will continue to track it. But I, I wonder if they're banking on fans checking out. And if their plan is, Dubas is coming back, Keefe is coming back. Yeah, we're talking a big game about changing, but we're actually not going to do anything then it probably makes sense from that standpoint to let it breathe as long as you well, possibly can. Well, if you were doing can. that, Brian, wouldn't you do the same thing? Exactly. And I guess that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I get the impression, like, what you're interpreting that as noodles is bedlam, and they're waiting for bedlam. It may be they're waiting for people to fall asleep well, well, so that they don't do anything. Okay, like, I think I, that option is just as feasible. And, like, and this, you're you're right. This is a bad analogy, but do you not feel like there needs to be a body on the tarmac, like for them to move on? I thought that last year. I thought it the year before. The last, it didn't happen. So last I don't year know. was the goalie coach. The goalie coach got. Well, not that renewed. doesn't count though. That's not enough. But that, that's I, not a big player. I, I, well, I'm just saying. Like, I believe. I don't know. Again, you guys tell me. Do you not feel like this time around there needs to be some form of like, hey, there's our change. There it is. Like, I don't know. Is Does there need to be? I guess the, there's Noodles, the question. I came the, on after the series last year, and I was adamant a massive change had to be made. Adamant that right. you had to send a message that this wasn't good enough. They did nothing in terms of the big players. Yes, they turned the goalies over. They turned players over. They had a you know the goaltender coach. They had a big deadline. Like, there was literal turnover, but the big four were back, 
and it was Riley, and it was going to be Muzzin and Brody and Keefe and Dubas and Shanahan. Nothing changed. Like nothing right. tangible in terms of the pillars of the organization. And I, I remember it vividly coming in saying, clearly you got to shake that up. And they didn't right. do it. So would I do I believe that that's something that should happen? Sure. But it doesn't matter what I believe All because right. that's not how these guys operate. And maybe within the house, things are different. Like we all, everyone's got a different viewpoint of what life is like as a Maple Leaf. Dude, as I a, get it, Hayes. But when, when anyone who has any kind of view, there's no way in hell you could attack it, attack it again with the same thing. There's just no way. I'm, I don't care which way you view it. So you think it's a 0% chance? That, that everything not, that, is the same? Yeah, zero. that the pillars are the same. Zero. Absolutely zero. So, but that's, I guess then that's what are they kind of. For? Well, may, like I say, I don't know. Kyle's presser on, on Monday maybe maybe caused everyone to take a step back and go, hey, let's make sure that, you know, all is good in his land. Where, you know, if they were going to get a deal done, what does that look like? You know, does he want to be the manager moving forward? Like, these were some of the questions that were put to, towards me. And he gave some definitive answers, but saying, well, I need to visit that, revisit that with my family. So this is the time I'm sure he's doing sure. that in the communication. Yeah. It's just there. there's so many question marks. You're right. It could be on Tuesday when everyone's back after a long weekend go, you know, Kyle Dubas has signed an extension. Uh, and, and Dubas is going to speak about his plan moving forward, and we get some more clarity from that, it, whether he's like, I, I have faith in Sheldon getting this done. Everything's on the table, like I said last Monday, as to how I move this organization forward, which, I mean, a lot of these are rational and fair. It just, I, I feel like something is thrown a wrench. In, like, you feel like there would have been answers sooner, but again, they don't owe me or anybody else explanation it just to be interesting. I'm waiting for a shoe to drop. I don't know if it will. Yeah, exactly. I, and that's, I guess, what I'm saying is trying to predict what they're actually thinking. Because when, when you allow the dust to settle, you do realize, as kind of ridiculous as it might sound, it's, but it's just a fact, this was the best season they've had in 20 years. Yes, they got dusted in the second round, but they did win something for the first time in 20 years. Now, if this was – that was four or five years ago, clearly it would have been celebrated differently and they would be talking about it differently and everyone would be happy and everyone would go on with their merry way and we'd say, well, right. you know, they're going to build on it next year. Obviously, that has not been the case because it's been seven years with the Matthews and Marner era. But I would use this example to possibly apply, you know, what I'm – trying to bring to the table here. And again, I, I don't know what they're going to do. I'm just right. saying if everything's on the table, well, that has to include bringing the band back. Like that's also on the table. If everything's on the table, bringing the band back is, would be included in that. It has to be. Yeah. What, like when we talk about this team and we had the earlier in the week, we were talking, you know, we were talking about soul and all that kind of stuff and it went viral and everyone was buzzing. And I had a bunch of people write me saying, this is why no one wants to stay in Toronto. This is why guys leave. And I've been, trying to rack my brain for an example of someone who left because they just didn't want to be here anymore. It's one thing if you, if you don't have money, like if it gets priced out, you know, like Hyman, I think wanted to be here, but he's like, well, Edmonton's going to pay me more. I'm going to leave. Right? right. I think Bunting would love the return. Willie loves it here. Marner loves it here by all accounts. I think Matthews, if he resigns, like I'll use examples of the previous core, Phil Kessel, Dion Phaneuf, they got crushed in this town. Everything I heard was they love being Leafs. Noodles, you can speak to yep. it. You and Dion are front. Dion loved being here. He, he loved did. being here. He when did. he retired, where did he go? He came up here. So yeah. there's this view on the outside that it's awful. It's a it's so tough. In the bubble, these guys are treated so well. It's a first class organization. No better they place love in the being league. Leafs. Exactly. So I guess that's what I'm saying is. There's this view like, oh, it's so hard. There's so no, no, like Matthews, you're running them out of town. No, you're not. Nobody's doing that. G give me an example of a prominent player where the Leafs were like, we want to keep you. And he said, I can't do this anymore, man. I'm out of here. I can't. Obviously, there are players in the league that don't want to play in this market. There are players that wouldn't want to play in Carolina, Columbus, that's New different. York, LA, yeah, Chicago, different. everywhere. Yeah. Every market, there would be players saying, I don't want to be there for whatever reason. But Leafs, when they're here, 
it's not like anyone's running anyone out of town or they're running away. And the and reason dude, I bring up that example is on the outside, we're like, it's a mess. You got to do that. I don't know if they're saying that inside. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't – maybe they feel like, hey, we, we did something and we can sell this and ownership signs off, so it's all good. Yeah, and people that think – like, they need to understand that the fan base – and, Brian, you grew up watching the Toronto Maple Leafs being a fan. So did I. It's like you have to wonder, and you're almost praying. Like, the New York Rangers streak ended. They won a Stanley Cup. They were chanting in the crowd. What was it, 1942? 1940. 1940. 1940. The Boston Red Sox end their streak. The Chicago Cubs end their streak. So this is one of the markets, a major market where people are like, are they ever going to end this streak? And then they go through the last 20 years and they get one round out of it. Is that going to ease people's pain? It's no. not. No. Yeah. No. Of course People not. are like, where's our streak? Like, wh- when is that one going to end? The diehard Cubs fans, the people that go to the games year after year, their misery ended. Like, they won a World Series. They put a team together and they got it done. Same with the Boston Red Sox. Same with the New York Rangers back in 93, I think it was. 94? But it's like people in Toronto are like, is that that, that ever going to happen here? And they're dying for it. Remind me, though, wasn't the Cubs like... A hundred years, like yeah, how long? It was, a, it was like a hundred years. years. I right, think it was so 1908, and then we're talking generations of yes. fans. Like you know, I know here in '67, we got a like long the way chat, to go. When I played for the Islanders, <laughs> when I played for the Islanders, the Islanders were uh, a dynasty in the '80s. So the Islanders fans always used to chant 1940 because they would let Rangers fans know. They had never won anything since 1940. Yeah, but hey, don't say it's not as bad as Cub fans because they have an extra 20 or 30 years tacked on. It's still long. It's all the same. Yeah, for, yeah like, it's all the like same. for me, I was Once you get to 25 or 30 years, it's all the same. Right. Well, I, I, I get that. But what I'm saying is a lot of people like say it, it's, it's been a lifetime. It's been my lifetime. My dad's looking for that. Yeah, I yeah, get yeah. that. Here, here's, I'm going to go the other way on, on one thing. I had a former relief tell me this, and this was years ago. I was still playing. And he said he loved Toronto, but he was like there was an expiration date for him where he goes, I felt like I had to be on every day. He goes, you know, we wouldn't play till Thursday. It'd be Monday morning practice. And he goes, like, I felt like I had to be, like, on. There was, you know, media. There was attention. He goes, there were other, you know, at other markets, he's like, you just go and practice and you get on with your day. So he said it was taxing in a different way. Not that he didn't love the city. He just said it was a different type of pressure and tax that came with it. Uh, as far as the attention that you got. And he said he hit an expiration date because he said he hadn't been in other organizations. He's like, boy, it was really different, you know, looking at the Toronto market compared to, I don't know, he went south of the border, the market he was in. And he, and not that he disliked it. He loved his time in Toronto, but he was like, man, was it so different compared to, you know, the market he ended up going to where there wasn't every day you just you know show up, you practice, you, you play, the attention. He felt, for his personality, it taxed on him. Like, sure. I don't know what – but everyone's and different. That's, everyone's different, Like, and that's it, exactly. And I understand that if it's years in the making, right. if, if you're wired a certain way. But that's, that's not that the attention was negative. That's the attention, period. Right, right. Like, no, that's no, the just end of being the on. Like, the, it exactly, wasn't. which – Again, like I always hear from fans, and I understand it because fans are disappointed, and you're trying to find different reasons. You're trying to explain how it's been this long and how it's gone wrong, and it's easy to say that it's well, the media's on them, or the fa- you know you're on them too much, or, or there's too much this, or of course people are gonna. That just isn't gonna stop because of the nature of of the city, the industry, the team, the amount of fans. Like that, that's just what's gonna come with this. That's just the way it's gonna work. Yeah, and, and you know what there's else nothing drives people you can nuts. do about it. You know what else drives people nuts, Brian? And there was a guy at my house doing some work. He's like, one thing that bothers He goes, I don't know if it bothers me, but I almost find it shocking and disappointing, and it kind of pisses me off. He's like, to see the Seattle Kraken advance after their second year in the league and another team that's been in around for five years, and everybody talks about the Leafs and their resources and what they have and what they have at their fingertips – 
why can't they get it right? And there's going to be a team possibly going to the cup two years in in five since they've existed. Yeah, <laughs> Vegas is four wins away from a second cup final. In They're... five complete total years. So they always it wonder, crazy. Yeah. why can they do it? How come they have found a formula and they can't do it? I don't know. That's that, It bothers people. Yeah, as it should. Of course. As yeah. it should. And that's it. And that's what's at stake here for the Leafs and, and ultimately ownership and then Shanahan and then it trickles down from there. Uh, Dave Pullen coming up. Game one of the Eastern Final tonight, Carolina, Florida. Feels like we haven't had those two teams playing forever. Yeah, Yeah. hockey in general, but certainly the Eastern Conference. So we'll get to our picks for this round, both the East and the West. Uh, Pulley's coming up here. LeBron's coming up. Our boy Steve Sands from Oak Hill. We're tracking the PGA. And game two, Lakers, Denver tonight. Jimmy Butler is the epitome of a playoff performer. So we'll get into what he did in Boston last night. Lakers, Denver, game two tonight. Victor Wembanyama on his way to San Antonio. Mark Kestitcher coming up of the NBA on ESPN. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Our buddy Dave Pullen later in the afternoon. We're tracking the PGA down at Oak Hill. Some Canadian content sitting atop the leaderboard. Corey Connors, he's in a good spot. Pendrith is okay. Nick Taylor. Your boy Adam Hadwin's out there right now. So can Connors to to. can he iron his way to a maze? Is that possible? I know. I I think Dustin Johnson drove it to some majors. Tiger Woods just all around better than everyone. Some majors. Can you iron it? Like I, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Tee to green. The guy's a machine. Can he putt well enough? I, I guess we'll have to find out. Steve Sands later this afternoon. Game two, Denver, L.A. tonight. Last night, Jimmy Butler and the Heat go in there, stun the Celtics and that third quarter and what Jimmy Butler did. He had, what do you have, six steals last night on top of the the 30-plus points he put up? The guy's a machine in the playoffs. And yeah. to chat about it, we're joined now by play-by-play with the NBA on ESPN. He's out in Denver. Here is Mark Kestitcher. How you doing, Mark? Gentlemen, good afternoon. I, I wish I could be so uh, bold as Kevin Harlan when he went Jimmy friggin' Butler during the broadcast <laughs> last night. Uh, I had PJ next to me who somehow doesn't use an F-bomb when the red light is on, which is remarkable because when it goes off, he uses it for about 18 different adjectives. Uh, but that's about what we were thinking uh, watching that game in a restaurant in Denver last night. Could Jimmy Butler, like, how far – can he take them with these type of performances? Does this run out of gas? What is he capable of with that group? Like, how could this possibly continue? Or can it, period? It, you know what? I, I've been sitting here all year trying to figure out what's wrong with the Miami Heat. And then we get to the playoffs and the play-in where they were nearly eliminated in that second play-in game. And I figure, you know, surely they're not going to go far. that They've got to face Milwaukee. And then, uh, you know, the Knicks weren't as good as Milwaukee, and they took care of them. And then I'm saying, that's it. That's as far as they can go. And then last night happens. And I just have to come to grips that, you know, Gabe Vincent has turned into a very capable point guard. Uh, Caleb Martin, I guess, is better than anyone, you know, ever thought he could be. Max Struess is the real deal. So, like, you know, we haven't even talked Butler and Adebayo. I don't know how they're doing it. I really don't, except that uh, they're gritty. Um, you can't let up for a moment. That's what Boston found out. That was a long moment in the third quarter last night when they gave up 46 or whatever it was. Uh, so everything tells you it, this should be it. This should be done. That's as far as they go. A one nothing lead on the road. But uh, you, I, I just can't figure out how they do it. But they are an amazing team, I guess is the best way to phrase it. Well, I, I would argue that the same thought process is applied to the Lakers all year, Mark, where – it was like, are they going to miss the plan again? What is going to happen here? How south is this going to go? And now all of a sudden, they're in the Western Final. Yes, they're down one. I expect them to respond tonight. But same kind of scenario. They had to play their way in, and then they've taken care of business. How much faith do you have in the Lakers still having enough in the tank, not only to respond tonight, but possibly push through Denver? You know, I, it's weird because Miami's up 1-0 and the Lakers are down 1-0. And, you know, it's easier to buy the Lakers than it is Miami, especially, you know, Anthony Davis has played for two straight months. I mean, that's like a headline down here, uh, you know, <laughs> that he hasn't gotten injured. And LeBron James has left enough in the tank, you know, to to keep it interesting. And they've got guys who, you know, have found good roles since either acquisition 
like Rui Hachimura or more uh, playing time like Austin Reeves. And I think underrated is Dennis Schroeder as well, who's been around the league for many years. And, you know, he's he can do a good job defensively for you. Um, you know, he also fills in as a, uh, as a uh, playmaker, you know, when LeBron's got to go out of the game or whomever's got to go out of the game. So I just think Denver's a much better team than anybody's given them credit for all year long. Uh, I'm fascinated to see what the Lakers come out with tonight. I mean, if you look at just the second half alone, uh, you know, they outscored Denver and, you know, the Nuggets had to, you know, make a couple of key baskets, a couple of big plays, hit a couple of contested threes just to keep from blowing a 21-point lead. So the Lakers are eminently capable of getting the road split before going home. Um, But I just think Denver is a lot better than, you know, people have realized, even though they're the number one seed in the West. I think they'll be prepared for whatever adjustment the Lakers are going to make. And I think we already saw some of that uh, at the end of game one. Uh, So, uh, you know, just – Looking at it from game two, I'd love to see a 1-1 series going west to, to L.A., but still much advantage uh, to the Denver Nuggets tonight. Mark, the players standing in the NBA seems massive. Goat talk and rankings. How badly, or if at all, does the Joker kind of need to get one for his standing, or are the MVPs enough? How much would you think that would be weighing on him, and how important would it be for him? I think we're so fascinated with rings, and maybe I'll just keep it to Americans. All right, maybe it's a North American thing. Uh, you kind of he, should be fascinated with that. Everyone's fascinated with everything else. Why not be fascinated yeah. with the rings? But but really fascinated because you know, like you know, in the NFL, you know, you think of Dan Marino, you know, one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, number number one. You know, Jim Kelly had four great shots in Buffalo and and never won, and it's always a stain. It feels like a stain. Charles Barkley, you know, who got an MVP and had a you know Hall of Fame career, but never won. Like, you just want to get that one so you can just throw it out there. I mean, he's already Jokic putting himself, (laughs) you know, in this pantheon of this age among these three great centers that are playing right now that, you know, he's probably the best of them all. And, you know, Giannis has already won two MVPs. And, you know, we we know what happened with Embiid and the regular season MVP and the team flame out in the playoffs. But, you know, as good as he is, and he's different, right, because – uh, he can do everything, seemingly. He doesn't look like a great athlete, but he can run for 40 minutes in an NBA game. And, uh, you know, it seems like he's got seven eyes around his head and can find the open guy when the double team comes. Uh, so he probably doesn't need it to be among the greats when it's all said and done. But I think we're all, me included, fascinated to say, you got to get one, and this might be his best chance. You mentioned Embiid. Like, when when are we going to kind of lose faith in the whole process there? Yeah. Like, like, does that ever work? I mean, they got rid of the coach. Like, is that ever going to work there? This was the year. This was to me. This was the year because it any it feels like anybody can win. Um, you know, look, we saw Milwaukee go down in round one. I thought that Doc had a really good team, and for a moment there, I'm like, they're going to get by Boston, and then everyone's going to write their name in the finals. Doesn't mean they'll win it, but everyone's going to overlook Miami and. You know, maybe Boston overlooked Miami yesterday. I don't, uh, you know, with Doc going away now, and we'll see who they bring in there, and who knows what's going to happen with James Harden. Uh, you know, one guy can't can't win it all. you got to have a good team. And uh, I thought this was the year that, you know, Harden maybe would come through. We saw those two 40-point games in the Boston series, and then we also saw where he just kind of disappeared. Uh, you know, and Maxie's coming into his own. And I thought they had some good role players there. So I thought this was it. Um, And much like, you know, the Golden State saga to see, you know, the end of the dynasty, if this is it, what they're going to do this offseason. Philly's in that same boat for me. Got to see who the coach is. Got to see what they're going to do, trades or re-signings, free agent deals. Uh, But it just feels like they've moved just in the last week that they've moved farther away. Like they had this opportunity and maybe they lost it. Chatter with Mark Kastetra of ESPN. It's uh, game two tonight, Denver, L.A. Last night, Miami draws first blood in the East. They get past the uh, Celtics. Meanwhile, the big story of the week is the Spurs winning the draft lottery, and that means Victor Wembanyama is on his way down to Texas and following in the footsteps of Duncan and Robinson and others. Um, I'm, I'm curious if, as a play-by-play guy, is, is that the one guy you're looking forward to? next year like i'm sure you love your job you love calling great games 
But is it like a clear-cut favorite? you got to place eyes on this guy. you got to call a game featuring Victor Wembonyama. Yeah, I, I think so. You know, it, it's uh, I, I'll be at the summer league too for the first three days in Las Vegas, and uh, whenever they ask me, that? You know, I feel like he'll just pass that. And say I'm not doing it. <laughs> I like, I hope he plays in at least a couple games, but it's you know it is like 11 days. I, I once one of the years a few years ago somehow some of the bo- one of the bosses asked if I could do the whole summer league, and I don't know what I was thinking, and I said yes, and I remember checking into some swanky hotel and. The lady says, oh, you know, Mr. Kestisher, we have you for 13 nights. And I'm like, what the heck did I sign up for? So from that moment forward, I said, just give me the first three days. The best chance that you're going to see the top draft picks play. Um, you know, we saw, you know, Bancaro last year and Holmgren before he got hurt uh, and Jabari Smith. So it was kind of fun. And I hope that we'll get a little bit of Wembenyama. I, I imagine we're going to have to get at least two or three games. But who knows? Because, uh, you know, in this age of, making sure guys are rested. And I think the Spurs were in the forefront of making sure that, uh, you know, everybody, they let the health team decide what was best as far as, uh, you know, uh, load management, I guess, was discovered in San Antonio. So we'll see how many games he plays this year. I was sitting next to P.J. Carlissimo, of course, won three championships with Greg Popovich as his assistant as the draft lottery was happening. So it was kind of fun to watch him out of the corner of my eye because I know how much he and Pop um, still stay in touch and, uh, you know, what great friends they are. So it just, it's amazing that Greg Popovich pushing 80 and in five decades and with all the championships, um, you know, he has a chance for this next chapter or last chapter. And, right. uh, you know, a seven, five kid from France with an eight foot wingspan. I can't wait to see him. It's going to be a scene. Yeah. I just wanted to add, was PJ eating out? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, we, we have not eaten in yet. We, we golfed together <laughs> yesterday. Uh, he, here's how good PJ is. Not only did he find a restaurant, but he talked them into sticking us in the wine cellar, and they brought in like a 65-inch plasma so we could watch Miami Boston, which uh, Mike Breen came out with us, and I think that was uh, that was a demand. We have to be able to see the game if we're going out to dinner. So I, I just leave the plans <laughs> to him and, and hope not to gain too much weight over the next four weeks. Yeah, that, there's only that. one question left. Like, <laughs> how much money do you think that that man spent on eating out in the last 30 years? <laughs> I think it's That's a couple a million question. all day long. <laughs> I want to itemize it, too, for, for wine, because that, that's a separate total uh, that will also probably blow your mind as well. So yeah, yeah. It's probably $5 million. $5 million <laughs> on yeah. dinner. Yeah. With it's inflation? Got seven figures. 100%. <laughs> hey, I, I had two big wigs at the table yesterday. I threw my credit card in, and it got thrown back at me, so it was a good night for the Kestisher household. There you go. Take <laughs> advantage. It. Absolutely. Uh, enjoy it tonight, Mark. Thank you for doing this. All right, guys. Have a good afternoon. Mark Kestisher of ESPN. Yeah, that Victor Wimbanyama, you see some of the takes around in this guy. It's wild. No it's one's seen him play. It's completely over the top. And this is the nature of the business. I get it. It kind of reminds me of the Matthew Nyes situation. Obviously, different players, different context. But everyone had a take on Nyes without ever seeing him play. <laughs> I know. Right? Oh, everyone yeah. knew well, that he was well, going to be a star. Or oh, a Joe from the bridge. Joe from the bridge knew yeah. him. He had, you know, oh, had you just seen slide him. him right in, play him here. I think he could kill penalties. Well, like, the, Joe, only take, we, the only takes we had were the, was the couple games in Tampa or whatever. Like, right. His, what did he play? One regular season game before the playoffs? I think he played a few. Three. But three, also three. three. Understanding yeah. that he was That's a good the prospect. only take I could make after that. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. and, and understand I'm not making he's a, a good take prospect. on a guy at playing <laughs> college hockey. Like I'm not doing that. Right, and it's the same I thing know. here. Obviously, he's a great prospect. Obviously, the hype is 100 percent legit, and the expectation should be through the roof. We get it, but like the idea that Insane. people are debating if this guy, you know, if he's not a top ten player, it's a bust or it's a Dude, disappointment. But the thing is, Hayes, like, what? That's what I talk about the rankings, like. The NBA is so hyper-focused on who's the GOAT and who's this. It's like, you're telling me this guy is a more coveted prospect than LeBron was playing back in, in Ohio at high, that Irish high school where that Notre Dame or whatever? <laughs> that guy was being tracked like Michael Jordan with the Chicago Bulls in, yeah. in high school. Well, you know what's going to happen here. If, if this kid shows up and has a great first three years, he'll be anointed. The greatest player we've ever seen. Oh, Just like, come on, man. That's already <laughs> happened with Mahomes. Mahomes has already been granted that by some people, that he's the greatest pure 
quarterback ever to play the game. But how could you say that when a guy just finished wrapping up a career with seven Super Bowls? I'm not the one that's saying it. But there and are don't kid yourself. He, he doesn't run around with the athleticism of Patrick Mahomes. But he's the main reason they won the Super Bowl. So how could you even go there? Well, listen, it's Mahomes guys like you that st- you you start that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't start yes. anything. I'm just telling you that that is what's going to happen. Like if Wembenyama three or four years in is a stud, there will be someone will say, "All right, that's my attack angle." I'm going to say he's better than LeBron already, and that's what's going to happen. And that's I want to take a break. I, I want I want I want to take a break, and I I have to come back because I walked into this function last night. And people were coming up to me saying, the morons on the show were talking about people more popular. From, I, I, I don't know what they were no, saying. I think they the phrase like, was No, no, they, were, they, they all yeah, said, they're, like, they're just giving it to you, saying, who's more famous from Guelph? And I'm like, does that really? I know when somebody's absent, they get ripped, but you had to do more famous from Guelph. Oh, we did a yeah. list. And we did a, a full list. That are absolute no-brainers. Like there's yeah. a few where Take you. Were, a, but I know I, I don't. Right, we'll come break. back and we'll get into it. <laughs> Who's from Guelph that's better than you? All right, we'll do that. Now. And I'll got the chance to agree. You can or respond. Sure, you can. Yeah, is it fine. better or more famous? Well, it's kind of a combination of both. At some point, it just became that's a better person than you. Okay, you know, but that you have to do me. If you, I pretty much know the answers, but you have to tell me what you guys voted. All right, we'll get to it. All right. Yep. Full recap. Overdrive <laughs> continues. TSN 1050 online. TSN 1050.ca. All right. So it was a big night in Guelph last night. The uh, Sports Celebrity Classic, the Hall of Fame out there, right? Yeah, I'd like to say, first of all, thank you to everyone at the Italian Canadian Club. Mike Kelly, congrats. All the other inductees, congrats on a great night. Paul Osborne, great night hosting. But Mike Kelly was the GM of those great Guelph teams, and he deserves all of it, and he's a great man, and all the boys showed up. Mr. Rooney was there. All the guys were there. It was great. Shout out. Yes, we love yeah. Guelph. Great, great town, and actually the home to, to a lot of celebrities, a lot of well-known people, a lot of well-known Canadians. Very famous people. Very right. famous people. Because we were thinking, like, O's going there. Obviously, you're famous. Todd Bertuzzi was there, right? Todd Bertuzzi was there. Big Bert's a very famous, and yeah. both of you are <clears throat> Guelph Storm. So what did you guys concoct? Who's more famous? Well, well Jonas we, was the one. <laughs> Jonas for started reason. a loser. Why did you take his? <laughs> of all people, you shook your head and said, great idea, Jonas. Actually, it was a very good programming <laughs> decision. It was very creative. Awesome. Yeah. There's a couple right off the bat that you're just, you're not even in the same universe as these people. Go ne- ahead. Who? Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell. Yeah. Obviously. Which, you guys didn't vote me ahead of Nev Campbell. She I was in one think, movie in the night. What 90s. are you talking about? She was in Party of Five. She was like, she's a superstar. Yes. Yeah, Literally a superstar. I address the nation daily. Doesn't I, matter. Do, she's Nev she's Campbell. She's one of the great Nef Canadian Campbell. actresses of all time. Yeah. It, it's Dude. just, it's not even close. <laughs> um, and then Robert Munch, also, Bob Munch is clearly, <laughs> clearly. Dude, are you talking about that goon with, with the curly hair that does the kids' stories Yeah, the author, and songs? kids' author, yeah. Bob Munch. <laughs> Bobby Munch. You picked way Bobby better. Munch's I, over I, me? All day. Yeah, Bob Munch is did. an A-list Canadian celebrity. I don't know where you are on the alphabet, but Bob Munch <laughs> is absolutely ahead of you in line. Okay, now, well, that, you've given a list of three. I'm number one on the list so far. Do you have anyone else well, that was contemplating? Logan Couture. Yeah. We put Logan. you ahead of Logan. I voted for you ahead of Logan. Yeah. Right, in the nice. States, maybe, maybe in the States for him, but I'm more popular than him in Canada. Okay. George McPhee. Yeah. We GM. put same you ahead thing. of him. No, same thing. Yeah. Brian McClellan, GM of the Capitals. Same, same thing. thing. Yeah, exactly. And then there was some, like, economist or something. Yeah, there was an economist who had a Nobel yeah. Prize. And I know what you for. did. I, I know what both of you two <laughs> losers did. You're like, the economist is more oh, popular. Yeah, sure. than well, the guy won a Nobel Prize. Uh, well, like, I said he's a better person than you. <laughs> so that that was clear cut. I just said he's contributed more to society than you ever yeah, have. There, there so was an goal. economist. An yeah, economist. But he, he won a Nobel yeah. Prize, though. So that's he gives the you thing. the prices of apples and bananas, and that's more important than right. addressing the inflation. nation. Inflation. Yeah. I think he wrote a paper on inflation. I was very yeah. impressed, and he got my vote. Yeah. So we got to get into this later. There's lots. Bob There's Munch, lots. Nev Campbell. Outside of that, you're right there. You're number four. So you, buddy, you, you, we got to go to break. Mount Rushmore. But you know yeah. that I'm ahead of Bob Munch. 
No. Give me that. Absurd. Throw that on Twitter, Grappler. No, Bobby. We'll track it. Hour two coming up. Overdrive continues. <laughs> TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. Bobby Munt.